Welcome, I'm Bev Adams. I own an independent paper crafting business showcasing products from Stampin' Up. I made this pretty card with products from Stampin' Up. I made it for my oldest grandchild's birthday. I sell these products and also a few items to make crafting more convenient. I have the free detailed directions for this project on my website and you'll be able to click the links for the products that you would like to be taken to my online store at Stampin' Up. You'll see where to find all of that at the end of the video, so don't worry about taking notes. It's time to put stamps, ink, and paper together. My directions are actually not for this card. This card uses one of our new in colors. This is Pale Papaya. And I wanted to give you directions for a card that you could make today. So I used Mango Melody. I liked the Early Espresso and the Mango Melody, but I would, wasn't sure which other color. So I used the Color Coach. Stampin' Up! used to sell something they called a Color Coach. Now they make this available free. And you can just print this out using your printer. I print it on cardstock and cut it up. It's a very, very useful tool. And you can get a copy of this from my website if you go to bevadams.com. I put a link for the color coach on my website for this project. And so I chose Coastal Cabana for my third color. I used Enjoy the Moment. It's got some nice seed pods on it. I went looking for seed pods, and I think I've identified these correctly. This is from a bottle tree, sycamore, probably a water iris, maple, hibiscus, lotus, and poppy. And it's the poppy that I'm going to use today. So my card base is early espresso. It's half a sheet of cardstock. So it's five and a half by eight and a half, scored at four and a quarter. I have a layer of the same early espresso that's four by five and a fourth. I have a layer for the inside. I usually use very vanilla or whisper white, but I thought I would use the Coastal Cabana for the inside. And then I thought that either way this looks good. This card, I did my stamping on the Mango Melody. For this card, I thought I'd switch it around and do my stamping on my Coastal Cabana. These pieces are both two and three quarters by four and a quarter. So these are my basic layers. So to give myself that border, I'm gonna cut this down by one fourth of an inch on the side and on the top. So that makes this piece two and a half by four. I'm going to go ahead and stamp on this layer so the ink can dry. And I'm just putting a piece of paper underneath because this stamp is a large stamp and it will probably go over the edge. I'm going to recommend that you start with the happy birthday stamp. And I'm stamping it way over to the right side of the card, maybe a couple of inches up. I wanted to start with that one because this one will, it's okay if this one goes off the edge a little bit. And that's all the stamping I'm going to do. So I am going to set that aside to dry while we emboss this layer. I neglected to tell you about my embossing folder. It's the Painted Texture 3D Embossing Folder. If you don't have the folder or an embossing machine, you can just leave this whole layer off. It will be great. You could do the whole card exactly the same, just a little simpler like that. For the embossing folder, you'll need the platform, the number one, the number one, and the folder, of course. 
the cardstock goes into the folder. And this one, it doesn't matter if you get it straight, totally fine. Then I'm using the number four platform on top and roll it through. And this gives a really lovely design. So then I'm going to go back to the stamped piece and I'm just going to adhere this to the Mango Melody. And I'm going to use Stampin' Dimensionals on the back of this layer. Stampin' Dimensionals add just a little bit of a rise and it really adds a lot to your project. You could use Stampin' Dimensionals on each and every layer of this card, but for me, I like to hold it to one layer so it goes through the post office easily. I don't think I mentioned the faux suede trim that is in Early Espresso. I'm wrapping that around this card. I learned in Girl Scouts right over the left and around and then left over right and just so that my and just to hold it so it's tight I snug it up and use my alligator clip from the hardware store. You can find them in the electrical department. And then so I did first right over left. Now I'm doing left over right around and through. And then if you pull the left side as snug as you can get it and then tighten it up a little bit with the right side, you'll get a very pretty knot. Give it a trim. And I always leave my ribbon on the roller. That way I don't waste any ribbon at all. And I always, even if I'm cutting a straight edge, even if I don't need to have my ends at a diagonal, I always cut them that way so that it's ready to go. Then I can just slide this knot over to the right side. And I'll adhere this to my card base. Most people do like to add something for the inside layer. You could stamp the same poppy seed pod or one of the other seed pods on here. There are some just seeds and I was thinking about stamping a row of the seeds on here, but I'm just going to leave it blank. And that's all there is to it. Here is the web address for this project where you'll find the free detailed directions and links for the products I used. Just click the links and you'll be taken to my online store at Stampin' Up! Also on my website you'll find a shop button. Under shop you'll find products from Bev, shopping strategies, frequent shopper points, a link to my online store at Stampin' Up. When you click Products from Bev, you'll find information about sharing my current products notebook in Evernote and taggers. I started making taggers when all of those layering shapes came out and it was so hard for me to figure out which one I used and how to tell somebody else which one I used. So I made taggers. Each tagger has the name of the dies the item number, how many in the set, and each tagger has the size of that shape. I also sell my cardstock sampler, fine tip glue pen replacement tips, and large and small reclosable bags that I use for designing series paper, both the 6x6 and the 12x12, and I have a link for my friend's bow maker. 
Under inspiration, you can scroll my projects, look at the latest post, find out about the basics, which I've designed especially for new stampers and techie tips. Under getting organized, you'll find links to stamp case slips, product labels, large labels, case inserts, ink refill cases, lots of coloring tools, a stamp pad storage solution for practically no money, catalog tabs, a quick reference, and a wish list with the catalog index, directions for my basic toolkit to go and my compact desktop toolbox. I have so many people looking for my Evernote current products notebook that I have a new tab just for that. You can find out how to share my searchable catalog. You can go to SIP together and you can find out how to join my team so that you can either save money or make money. Thank you for stopping by. Talk to you soon. Mm -hmm.